Welcome to Fireteam Chat, IGN's Destiny Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Joining me via vMix is the regular co-host, Travis. McClunky. And our very special guests, As the Cross and Kujay. As the Cross, Kujay, how's it going today, you guys? Good, man. Good. Glad to be here. Really good, man. End of another good week. Good Friday. Hell yes. Uh, on today's show, we are going to be talking about all sorts of fun stuff. We're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about the the PVP situation, what's going on there. That's the whole reason you guys are here. We're going to be talking about the delay. We're going to be talking about uh, what it's like playing as a new light player and some other fun things planned for the show today. Thank you guys again for joining us. Well, seeing it is uh Azcross and Kujay, you guys are PvP guys. Azcross, it was really funny. We were both making a PvP-focused video uh, very recently. Why don't you just let the people know what is your main challenge with PvP? And you said a lot of those points you came to after talking with Kujay. So just take us through like where your mind's at with specifically trials and the PvP sandbox. Oh, man. How many videos have we dedicated to this, right? <laughs> and, and, it, and it's been over years, but um, so I throw a lot of Hail Marys when it comes to sandbox and uh, when it comes to doing things with trials. And, and QJ is kind of the guy that he kind of like captures those Hail Marys and tells me, all right, that doesn't sound good. That sounds pretty good. No way in hell that's going to work. Uh, but we started doing, I guess, a state of the crucible video. I want to say back in trials of the nine. It was like a yearly video and just talked about how, how the state of Crucible is. And then that transitioned to trials. It was like state of trials. And then now what was supposed to just be a yearly video is turning into a seasonal video. And But there's just a lot of stuff you got to do to trials to make it, um, make it right for everyone. Not just for like, you know, your hardcore PvP players, but uh, e even your casual players, especially PvE guys. And Kujay, do you have any thoughts on uh, the state of everything? <laughs> uh, that's uh, a very, very open-ended question. I just uh, <laughs> thanks us, for putting it's me. It's called on a that. softball. <laughs> um, but it just there's there's so much that can be done to help PvP in this game. Like Cross mentioned sandbox, but honestly, I think that's the least of concerns anymore. We need to get more people excited to play crucible again people want to play because just more and more i hear like man i wouldn't care if pvp is in this game anymore like there are too many cheaters the rewards aren't good enough like we we need to get people excited about crucible again because it just doesn't feel like that's there let me so right travis you play a bit of pvp how, how are you feeling Probably about it we, we talked about it last week a bit but how, how are you feeling about everything too yeah, I mean, I mean, I I think I I talk about this every time we bring up trials, but my I play on console, so obviously cheaters are the biggest problem if you're on PC. But for me as a console player, the biggest problem is the fact that nobody wants to play the activity because it's not rewarding, right? Like masterwork materials aren't a reason anybody logs onto trials, and Destiny One had adept weapons, which are arguably the best reward any player could ask for, getting uh, elemental effects in their in their uh, primary slash kinetic slot and i think that if we had something like that it would who wouldn't play trials if that's the only way that you could get adept weapons i mean really that that alone would fix so many of the problems it wouldn't fix the cheater problem on pc but for you know console mm -hmm. players like me it would it would absolutely make everybody want to play that mode probably weekly i don't know about so you're saying all adept i don't know how to say the word weapons would be in trials only I mean, that's how it was in D1, right? Well, there were a few exceptions. That's how it was in D1, exceptions. but I'm not sure it has to be that way in D2. Why couldn't we have something like that for if we brought Prestige Raid back or Grandmaster Nightfalls? Like, you could expand it to the entire end game and just have both sides of the game get the same treatment. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then you could further break it up by making maybe certain classes of weapons available in each of those activities, you know. So one season you can only get the adept sidearm that's at max power from this type of activity, etc. And I think that that would make all of the end game valuable and everybody would want to play it in a way because I have no motivation to do Grandmaster Nightfall in the same way that you Destin have no way to do trials because 
we're outside of our element and there's no real unique reward that we're getting from those game modes that drive us there. And yeah. I think the addition of something you can't get anywhere else that is just for the elite players that, that are want to do the end game. I mean, that would fix so much of the, at least motivation part of it, you know, balance and sandbox and cheaters are, are kind of a separate issue, but at least for the motivation for people like me who in good faith, love destiny and want to play more of it. I mean, that's, that's really the thing I think that's holding it back most of all. I'm going to throw it to you here in a second, as across. Uh, in my opinion, I've been playing a little bit of trials, and it, it has been a disaster because you're constantly running into account recoveries. You're constantly running into accounts that are either using hacks intelligently or just have a, a very surprising headshot rate all of a sudden with, with right. their weaponry, and that's incredibly frustrating to go up against. Um, on the last episode, I brought up the possibility, or or Paul Tassi might have, um, about the option to matchmake in the way that uh, the Glory playlist has allowed you to matchmake with uh, Freelance. I actually really like that idea for Trials. But I think the biggest problem is account recoveries and hackers because it messes up the pool. And in addition, there's no sort of like, like I never know who I'm gonna go up against in a card, Reddit brought up hand-based matchmaking, where if I were ever to run into you as a cross and you're on like your fourth lighthouse run for a week and I'm on my third win for that week, that just seems like a bizarre situation to be in that, that shouldn't be happening. That's sort of my two cents on it. I'd love to hear from you about like, what are you? What are your main criticisms about it, and and what do they need to do to fix it? Like, how do we get back to a good place where trials is just this fantastic mode that we all we adore? It's a big question. So, yeah, you know, here's the thing: we 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 look back uh, with a lot of nostalgia when we think of trials, you know, in in D one and D one got a lot of things right by not only having rewards on the high end, adept weapons, and I know Bungie's already said they're going to be doing that. It's actually going to be like adept mods that they're going to include, which sounds even more interesting than adept weapons were back in D1. Um, but that was the high-end rewards. And on the low end, you had gold and silver tier bounties. Um, Jay, I couldn't remember. Was that repeatable, those bounties every week, or was it just once? So in Taken King and uh, Taken King and House of Wolves, you can only do them once per character per week. But when Rise of Iron hit, they made it daily. So you could get from no wins at all, you could get a reward from the gold tier and the silver tier. Both were guaranteed to be a weapon or armor. If you right. did that all four days, that's eight pieces of loot and then three characters. That's 24 pieces of gear. Right. For is, is not it, even a single win. It's a, it's a lootapalooza compared to now where you get one bounty per character and you know exactly what it is when the week starts and that's it. Diving into that, are you guys surprised that they made such an adjustment to limit the loot pool during a season where we have so many Umbral Engrams that it's it's filling up your, your postmaster basically? Like, why do you think they made that, that decision and uh, do you wish they'd revert back to the old one? Um, I, they made that decision on that front because they don't have adept weapons yet you know you can't hand out what's essentially the flawless rewards for these these bounties left and right um so yeah they need to expand the loot pool more jay brought it up a few weeks ago when we made our state of the trials video that the old trials of the non-weapons should should flow into this you know th these are all very good weapons you give them random rolls fantastic but you gotta have mm -hmm. adept portions of them to, to have them people seek them out on the flawless end you gotta you gotta have all you gotta have loot reigning that's good and worth it for people who are in the zero to three win category so they have reasons to play but then you also have to have loot that's exclusive to the people that are able to get to five wins seven wins and all the way to the lighthouse if it's if you don't have one you don't have the other yep. because if you if you've got a ton of loot reigning in the early areas and people don't care if they lose 05 because they might get that random world darkest before then that means more people are on the playlist and that means with it being card-based matchmaking the odds of running into me and ass across the three wins become exponentially lower the more people that you have in the pool you're more likely to play someone of your skill level yeah and, and my, that's how that's how d1 worked yeah my, because we had a big pool. sorry my whole point my whole point with that and i think you're echoing it is as you guys, the high level players like yourselves are getting more and more wins, you're pushed into like, it should get harder as you get more yeah. wins, right? You should be in a different category of player. And somebody like me who's on the struggle bus, maybe I, by the time I sign on Saturday or Sunday, I should 
still have challenges, but within my parameters of skill, I suppose. Now, it might sound like I'm talking about skill-based matchmaking, but that has its own set of problems. My whole thing is whenever I talk about things in the Destiny sandbox, I'm not talking about what currently exists. I think there needs to be more nuance with matchmaking and more nuance just across the board with a lot of the systems. But specifically talking about trials, I think they sort of need to look at who's being matched with who and why that's happening and how they, they can make it a better PvP experience for everybody. And, and that's just my two cents. Travis, do you have anything you want to add? Um, I mean, you mentioned matchmaking, which I think I, I, we know we talked about it uh, last week a little bit. But uh, I think matchmaking on trials is like a mistake and, and definitely not the thing that's going to fix trials right now, right? Because people already don't want to play it who are the type of people who would LFG for it and that sort of thing, or have existing groups. Even even those groups don't want to play. But uh, I don't know if we want to get into that now unless unless anybody really feels strongly well, about, well, about a debate on that. Let's take the matchmaking component out of the conversation and just say like regular trials the way it is right now, how, how would you adjust it, how teams are getting matched to be a better experience? How teams are getting matched. Mm -hmm. So... I think the problem is that there's just not enough players in the pool. I think if you if you match people with the same the same point in the card that they're at, I think that's a fine model. But the problem is that because there's no motivation to play trials and the play pool is so small, you're you're, you know, 9 times out of 10 especially on PC, you're going to get somebody who's cheating or an account recover or somebody who's just way out of your league in terms of PVP. So I think the solution is really to make trials more desirable and more right. playable to get more people in there because then there's going to be you know a free market of lots of different skill levels all playing and, and you're not going to be you know nine times out of ten getting matched with somebody who's just like the ultimate sweaty tryhard which mm -hmm. right now that's the whole player base everybody mm -hmm. who's playing that's what's left that. yeah yeah exactly. the, uh, in the the token changes bungie made this season are exacerbating that issue because the way it works now is you don't even get a token if you lose. You get nothing. You literally get nothing if you lose. And so after that three win reward, because and we needed to stop the token farming and early early in the card because that was a massive problem to driving people away. But now, if you can't get to at least five wins, say you're on a mercy card, you have to get five wins once to get a wealth card. That means you get one token per win and you get a payout of five at three. So you could go and get four wins and then ruin your card with like three losses plus the mercy gone. And you would end up with nine tokens for like eight games of potential misery. And you didn't even unlock a wealth passage. Like, like you're not going to play that. And it's, it's just yeah. making it worse this, this season in particular. I, I will say that's basically been my experience. I, I I've mm -hmm. gotten to four wins and then mm -hmm. you just get kicked to crap basically at that point, because you either end up against an account recove, and it's usually obvious. If you look at their card, and this is like their third trials game ever, and they're hitting every single headshot flawlessly and just doing crazy things that somebody with a low PvP score has, it's like you can just look at stats and, and make yeah. a determination, right? Um, and that's really, really unfortunate. I'm surprised you guys haven't, because uh, you were really passionate about the hacker problem and the account recovery pro problem in your video. If you're like me, you've probably said your two cents on it. So you're kind of like, I'm just going to say the same thing. It's terrible, right? Is, yeah, that, is yeah. that still your take? Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. look, the integrity of the game, uh, when when it's at this state, you know, I think every game deals with hackers, right? Uh, especially FPS games. But, you know, we do have an issue with recoveries. And I know guys that do recoveries, you know? And, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm attacking piggy banks right now. But... You know, don't lie to yourself. It does hurt the ecosystem. Now, we talk about matchmaking. We want to change matchmaking and, and maybe add like a solo portion to play this or, or uh, allow for easier matchmaking for casuals. You can't really do that because the moment you include that, recoveries are just going to get stronger. And so that, that's, that's what happens when you include that. That's why Bungie hasn't really included that because then, you know, recoveries are just going to just kick up even more. Now, I mean, how do you stop recovery? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that that's, people say it's TOS, you know, terms of service getting, getting hit there, but um, it's it's on every one of my videos. 
every every ad that pops up is a carry service. It's not just PVP; it's PVE as well. Oh, so, yeah. it, it, and it, been happening PVE for years. I actually, yeah. I was served one of these ads while watching. I think it was MTash video. Here, here's what they look like. I am in no way promoting this or anything. I'm just showing you what they look like, and they they appear consistently on videos. I saw like four more after this for trials, for weapons and everything. And that's what they are. I don't know what that group is. I don't even know how I looked them up, but yeah, we're constantly delivered these ads on YouTube. It's just like, it's, it's, what was that? Any three raids for $25 by now. It's just right. bizarre to me. It's bizarre to Look, me. Those ads, those ads aren't cheap either. You know, no. they're, yeah. they're pulling money. They're pulling money for sure. Oh, mm -hmm. But yeah. But now it's infecting everyone because organically, somebody that's just trying to get in there and play trials for the first time. And, and I think the best time that trials ever was, was when it first came out. You know, I never, I never saw any of this. One, there wasn't really any cheating when trials first launched back in House of Wolves. And no one was really doing recoveries back then, or at least to my knowledge. And so that was the best I think trials ever was. And I'm not even talking about sandbox. I'm just talking about from an integrity standpoint. Now, mm. though... I made a video where I said, I don't know how people can go flawless at this point in destiny. I just don't know how, because you run up against the sweatiest of the sweat, cheaters, or account recoveries. That's it. Yep. Yeah. People, you play people, on the stadia, that's how. That's <laughs> you really play on stadia, yeah, that's forward, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, or xCloud, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Kujay? Well, I was just gonna say, like, Cross makes a very good point about how now, like, people have realized how to monetize Trials is really the heart of it. Like, back during House of Wolves, recubs were barely a thing. You had a million plus people playing a week. Like, people were still barely even realizing that, like, carry culture was a thing. I mean, that was when, like, Crafty and the others blew up, and he was, like, still streaming through his PS4. It was just, we, we were all more ignorant about the darker side of what Trials could bring out. And it's been years and years and years, and I... I think the only way you could ever get rid of recubs now, like you see those ads everywhere cross. You mentioned this in a video you made a few months ago is Bungie's legal team would need to go to these sites. Like these are right. big monolithic sites that run these recub services now to the point where it's gotten professionalized to an extreme degree hmm. to where like people aren't allowed to like dismantle anything on a person's like character or change anything. Like it's just, it's creepy how professional it's gotten. So yeah. yeah, it's good. I mean, I'm not promoting the services, but you know, uh, you, you can bet your butt that they were they were sitting around perfecting the system, knowing that trials was on the horizon, and they did. You know, that's why you mm -hmm. see it. You see it everywhere. It's kind of crazy. I and as far as I know, Bungie hasn't taken a stance on it. It's it's a gray area whether or not it's well within the terms of service. They, they have. It's it is against the terms of service, and I think they've said that. I just don't know if they know how to enforce it, right? Like, yeah. how do you how do you monitor that sort of thing? Do they flag accounts that are logging into a bunch of other accounts? You know, I, I just I don't know if there's like a, a solution to it. But I think they have said that, like, yeah, it's it, technically not allowed. I did. It is. It's against their terms of service, but they've never truly enforced it. Not that aspect. Yeah, Basically, I, you're logging in. This means that like. If I ever logged into a friend's account and just did some random thing, it would be equally punishable as an account recovery would be. So it's got to be a cool. really difficult challenge for Bungie to figure yeah. out what to do with it. I, I think maybe the financial transaction is like the kicker there. I right? th yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. The fact that you're able to make money in that way. Yeah. So that's why I think going after those big, those big sites that facilitate thousands of recoves is the only thing Bungie can really do. Right. They, they can't go after people on a case by case basis, but if they shut down the organizations that facilitate easier recoves, getting them done faster, recoves would always still exist, but they'd be pushed back down to the bottom and a lot less relevant and frequent. I think that's the only thing they could really do is go after the big websites that promote it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think honestly, I, I would be willing to bet that, there's a reckoning coming in for those services because of the, the damage to the PVP mode. It's been really unfortunate as somebody that loves Trials of Osiris. When I first played it back when you guys were talking about House of Wolves, we, or I was able to go out to Bungie, play the mode, and I was like, holy crap, 
This was before battle royales were like huge. It nothing like this was out there. It was this right. this cool mode where you had to get the seven wins, and only then you got the cutscene. You got to go to the lighthouse. You got this coveted, awesome looking gear, and it was just a tremendously positive experience, and and it was excellent. Um, I, I hope we can get back there again with the mode. Um, we talked about it a little bit, just real quick from everybody on the panel. Could matchmaking work? If no, why not? If yes, how would it work? Travis, you, you've been pretty clear about this, but let's just get your two cents. Yes. So my my problem with matchmaking has nothing to do with like... Okay. Well, it kind of does. I guess my point is that there there needs to be some kind of barrier of entry for trials. And I mean that because people can accidentally click on a trials button if it if it has matchmaking they can just do it casually even though they're not serious about playing for the 2 hours that it takes to go flawless you do right? have to be 10 10 you have to be 10 10 right so there's there's one barrier of entry but i i think the issue for me is that L doing an LFG is essentially a matchmaking. People have pointed that out many times, but LFG is a barrier of entry. It requires you to post or respond to a post. It requires you to talk to someone. It usually requires you to get on a mic because people are gonna force you to do that. None of that is enforceable through a automated matchmaking system. They can't force you to put on a microphone. But like if I'm matchmaking in trials, which I probably would never use the service because it, it sounds like it would be a terrible experience. But if I was, I would really assume that everybody on it is going to be serious and send me a party invite and that sort of thing. And I just don't see that happening in a match made. So for, for me, it's I think the best path forward is put an in-game LFG, put some sort of way where players can kind of match in the world and set up their own groups before launching. But in I, I, th I think that there needs to be some sort of in-game barrier of entry that says... Hey, look, you've, you've got to kind of connect with people and, and build that party and that sort of thing. Cause I mean, is trials really even trials without that? Like if you, if you aren't relying on friends and kind of growing your bonds and becoming better with that group of people, is that really the core trials experience? Because what's the difference between that and match made comp at that point, you know? I mean, I, to, to me, it's it's kind of part of the mode. The reason I'm always surprised when people are, are so against it is because I would say that, uh, the Glory Freelance Playlist has been one of the most positive things that they have done. It got me into PvP in a serious way. I didn't have to like struggle to find a group. I didn't have to LFG to find a group. I didn't have to put callouts on Twitter. Like I'm basically like constantly like, all right, I want to go to the lighthouse. I need that hard carry. That sucks. For the first time, I had a way in the game to not have to do that. I could play casual in the Freelance Playlist and my skill level was like paired with other people at about my skill level. And I really, really enjoy that mode. It doesn't always go perfect, but it's probably one of the the best systems I've seen. So that's been my experience with playing in a match made glory ranked playlist. And uh, it, and I, I think to, to I, I think I actually agree with you. I, I like it. There are some comp people who don't like the freelance playlist because it kind of made, you know, getting unbroken a joke and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. there's, there's plenty of people like that, but I, I actually like it. The difference is that Trials is a seven match journey or more and that exactly. you kind of have to find a group that's willing to go through that whole thing. And who's going to, in a match made way, agree to a two hour you know, period of time. And, and, you know, and it, what if you, if, if it changes every match, then you risk, you know, getting on match five mixed with a group that you're just not gelling together and then it falls apart. So the only options are the chaos of match to match matchmaking, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, or matchmaking someone who's going to agree to stick around for an extended period of time. And that doesn't seem feasible. Yeah. So I, I just think the mode's very different. It introduces a whole new set of challenges, is what you're saying, if it yeah. were to be implemented. Uh, as the cross, what's what's your thought going down to the, the panel here on uh, matchmaking and trials? Could it work? Yes or no? Uh, you know, I kind of wish there was a way to hybrid it in a way that you don't split the playlist, kind of like how Glory is um, in the comp playlist. Instead, you, I don't know, I, I almost want to merge solo players matched up against other players in, in matchmaking. And what I mean by that, is there a way to possibly make the card shorter for for folks that are going about the playlist solo? So, you know, seven wins with your, your team of three from start to finish, or you can do, I don't know, maybe four wins as 100% solo. Jay, 
we haven't even talked about this. I'm just I'm sitting there just spitballing right now, thinking about this. But can you imagine just going? Because obviously it's more difficult to play as a solo player, right? You don't know who you're going to be matched. You may be matched with with young gods, or you may be matched with potatoes. You know, you don't know. But if you somehow scratch four wins up against three stacks, because you don't want to split the playlist. You don't want to have one solo playlist and and then a, other trial matchmaking, kind of like how comp is, because then we're going to have an, an even bigger issue where the population gets cut in half. And so if there's a way to incorporate the two, but simultaneously make it more rewarding for the solo player that does struggle and get the wins, could be could be something. Yeah, for some insight there, I just want to elaborate and uh, uh, strengthen your point there. Trials of Osiris right now, going to warmind.io slash activity. Uh, it is being beaten by dungeon runs today, Nightfall, Gambit, Story, Raid, Strikes, Crucible, and Patrols. Like, Patrols are just, like, open-world activities. Uh, the only thing being played less are Menagerie, Private <laughs> Crucible Games, <laughs> Forges, Heroic Adventures, Nightmare Hunts, and Reckoning. So, Travels of Osiris is, like, pretty dang low population-wise. And that's across... That's on every platform. It's worse, of course, on something like Stadia. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, when it comes to my thoughts on matchmaking, personally, I'm kind of with Travis. I'm not really, I'm not the biggest fan of matchmaking for trials. I think you could make it work to an extent if the reward structure is different. So, we mentioned, Cross mentioned, what if you soloed to four wins and that's it? Well, under the system we have right now, that would mean you get one drop per character per week because you've got your bounty. I guess two drops it would be the same drop twice. You get the three wins, you get the bounty, and then you get one token per win, nothing per loss. So if you had a system where you could only get to, like, say, four or five wins, solo queuing, you would still barely, you might get one extra drop from tokens a week because you would get nine tokens in that whole, like, hour, two hour plus adventure just getting only to four. Like, if, it's really a chicken and the egg problem of that. You could introduce matchmaking to it right now, just full on chaos solo queue, just let anything goes. And I still don't think you'd see people engage with the playlist because it's not worth it loot wise. The the part of the big reason that the solo comp playlist was so successful is that there were massive achievable, I say achievable carrots um, that you could get. Um, last year, I spent a lot of time helping my community get pinnacle weapons by getting defabled in the competitive playlist. You had guns like Recluse, Mountaintop, Luna's Howl, like Revoker, insanely powerful guns. Not only were they really good, people thought they could get them. The big problem right now is people don't think they can get to five wins, to seven wins, so they just don't engage. Because why would you when there's cheaters and hackers and account recubs and to stack teams everywhere. Like you can get more loot just doing a contact public event and get a ton of umbrals and get better rewards. So, but uh, I I personally wouldn't go down the path of matchmaking. I would love, love, love to see in-game LFG at last because this would solve the raid issue. The raids are by far the best PVE content that Bungie puts out in my opinion. It's a shame that we only got one this year as opposed to three raids like during year two of Destiny 2. And if you had an in-game LFG, then you could get more people together to do Master Nightfalls, the Dawn matchmaking for raids, for trials, for everything. I I feel like trials is a symptom of a larger problem. I Like, if Bungie's going to call this an MMO at last, which they did in their Vidoc last year, you got to have more social. And they said they were going to work on more social tools for the game. We haven't seen that yet, though. I actually, I actually agree with you. I realized that my mistake in saying that raid matchmaking could work is there's too much baggage tied around the word matchmaking in Destiny. Matchmaking is defined as methodologies to bring players together. But within Destiny, the way that they've implemented it, it has people have largely seen the negative impacts of it. So refining my statement, basically what I'm saying is when I say raid matchmaking could work, I do mean an LFG type system. Final Fantasy 14 has it. I've used it in Final Fantasy 14 with great success. And honestly, it's a party finder. You're able to set several of the, the yeah. things that you mm -hmm. need. And in Bungie, in a, in a Bungie game, I think it would be pretty easy. Um, you would need one column that is like, are you a new player? 
a, a seasoned player or a veteran, right? And you could only select those higher tiers based on your completions. The game would be able to auto detect that. Have you done it at least twice? Then okay, you can unlock the next tier and say you're this level of player. And like five times you're you're a veteran, I guess. Mm -hmm. That can be that can be argued. And there would be one person who would be host. He would be able to make these determinations. And the crazy thing is, the Bungie, the Destiny app, the official Destiny app has an LFG in it and people use it all the time. So they have the systems built, but they don't have them in their game yet. And uh, yeah, if you look at the official Destiny app, you can find it there. It's taken a while to load. But um, so your level of experience, I think, is key. Whether or not you require a mic I, or some sort of communication device would also be key. I think that could be fixed if Bungie somehow added emotes or communication tools similar to the first game on top of my head is Apex, which has a ping system that allows you to select a wheel and select, you know, a various, various commands that allow you to help people. Yep. And then there was one more category. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I absolutely agree with you. I would love in-game matchmaking for activities including raids and including trials. They should use the farm for that. They already have this like social space that nobody's using. They should just like repurpose the farm to be like some sort of LFG zone where you <clears throat> go there yeah. and play soccer with some guys while you have, wait to uh, find that's your, right. you know. Have Hawthorne set up like tents for yes. come over here and see if you want to do a raid or this is yeah, this or uh, uh, like, who knows. Uh, this this raid's tent and this raid's tent. Yeah. I could see something like that working. I mean the other side of things too, though, like every time we ever bring up matchmaking, everyone's like, oh, there's no way, you know, players going in there in matchmaking is going to be able to get through the encounter. Um, but dude, that's never stopped other games, other MMO games. It's like, you know, g get good. You know, you're either going to sit there and, in that dungeon or that raid or, or and finish it out, or you're going to keep coming back or give up one or the other. I, and, you know, I feel like Bungie just needs to just let it happen. I, I remember the other category now. It's what level of players do you want to play with? Do you want to like only allow in people that have two clears so they at least know the encounter? Or are you willing to take on solo players? Because maybe you got three, four people in your crew that are veterans that just know this raid through and through. Are you willing to run two people through it? I would be. I've LFG'd 95% of the raids I've run. 95% of them. I think I've had like four bad experiences and you're talking about i don't know 50 raid clears like i'm not a try hard in the, in the raid thing but the fact that my success rate using an lfg is that high um i think says a lot about the community and those that are willing to try challenging activities and tra challenging modes with players like myself who are less knowledgeable about like challenge weeks we actually did the final boss. Half the team didn't know how to do the challenge. Half the team did. The half that did explained it to us, and we got it done. We did it in two tries, you know? Nice. So, yeah. so the fact that... kind of makes me wonder if the mic or no mic filter is, like, even necessary, because it seems like with raids, it's like, who, who's going to teach you to do a raid with no mic? Like, is that even... <laughs> just I mean, mics required. That, that just, a lot of, a lot of yeah, chat windows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think <laughs> yeah. that... Um, and it's sad to say this. I, I think they gave up on guided games too early. I wish they would have went back to the drawing board with it, refined it a little bit, because there was something there for sure. And I like their philosophy with what they were doing with guided games. And it just it just kind of feels like it was a ban. I think it was taken out. I don't even know if it's in there anymore. Do you guys? It's in for some it's raids, up, and I think yeah. they removed it for most, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. So... Anyway, that's my two cents on raids. We're kind of going on a tangent. Before we move on to like just the news about the delay and everything, do you guys want to have any final points about PvP as across QJ? Not Travis. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I think we said our said our piece about it all. So great. Everything else we're just kind of uh, kind of spitballing. Being being a dead mule there so all right well, let's talk about the delay a little bit uh destiny 2 beyond light has been delayed to november 10th uh that's pretty important because it means the content vault that is going to happen on november 10th it's been delayed you have more time to do your moments of triumph and just play the game in its current state before it is all vaulted on november 10th but 
There are some challenges with it too, including the fact that it's going up now against a lot of heavy hitters, and it is now in the next gen console launch window. I think November 10th is their drop dead date because I think that's dang close, if not the day next gen consoles are starting to hit. So I want to throw it to you guys. How do you feel about the delay? Personally, I don't care about the delay. I'm going to play Destiny no matter what, right? But it is going up against Cyberpunk now, which is another game I know a lot of Destiny peeps are, are interested in. Uh, Travis, we'll start with you. Yeah, I have a theory that the PlayStation 5 is going to come out on November 10th and the Xbox One or Xbox Series X is going to be November 17th. 117. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yep, yeah. Well, it'll, it'll be 117. I think that's when Halo's going to come out. And also I think Cyberpunk's coming out that day exactly. So it and that's a, they have another marketing deal with with uh, Xbox. So uh there's and I think also Assassin's Creed which also has a marketing deal with Xbox. And uh last console generation the PlayStation 4 came out exactly one week before the Xbox. So there's a lot of history there uh in, in terms of that flow. So that that's my theory. I think that that uh, it probably was strategic. They they knew they needed to delay it, so why not just make it launch on next gen console if you can? Um, I'm with you. I don't I don't think it's it's bad. I think they need to take more time to build the game. Take all the time you need. You know they delayed Shadow Keep uh, as well. I think it was a little bit less. It was like maybe two weeks of a delay. This is much more substantial, but uh, it's it's not unheard of. And and this is to me, one of the benefits of them not being under Activision anymore is that we can actually see them delay things and take their time and put it out uh, when they feel like they're ready rather than, you know, uh, Destiny has a long history of releasing stuff and then this the season or that content kind of gets filled out later after it actually comes out. And I don't think that's good for anyone because then you have the huge surge of players and then they drop off before the content actually gets there. And people are like, oh, Destiny's really good. And they're like, nah, I logged on when that expansion came out. It didn't really have much on it. And it's like, yeah, back then it didn't. <laughs> so, Kuji, I'm going to let you go first. What do you think? I mean, personally, I think the delay is fine. And honestly, when they came out in the summer and still announced, we're going to release Beyond Blind on September 22nd when almost every other game this year in the midst of a global pandemic had delayed, like in Cyberpunk's case, twice. It was, if Bungie had been able to meet that date and push it out on time, especially considering they're working from home, like, of all things, the best use of Google Stadia hasn't been people playing on it. It's been Bungie building the game on it from home. Like, it's, if you guys were unaware of that, they've been using, they've been using Stadia to compile builds of the game and keep the development process rolling. It's why this season was on time. Kind of crazy. Um, so if they'd been able to put out Beyond Light about the normal schedule, despite such a radical change in their development structure, that would have been insanely impressive. So no surprise at all. I was kind of, I kind of figured there'd be a delay for a long time before it happened. So it is, I would, if there was going to be a delay, I think it would have been better if it'd been like the last week or two of October to avoid the Halo Infinite and the Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed Call of Duty. But if that's the time they need, they need to take the time. And about every two years, we see a massive project. Like going all the way back, we had Taken King and then Rise of Iron was a little bit smaller. And then obviously Destiny 2 launch was huge, a big thing. Um, we got spoiled with Forsaken a year later, which was probably the best DLC they've ever done. Last year was kind of small with Shadowkeep, so I'm expecting a huge Forsaken close to a level DLC in the fall. So they need take take all the time you need. So it's kind of how I feel about it. I agree with you, man. I, I think it's gonna it's gonna be huge. And they alluded to as much in the in the TWAB this week, right? I said it's mm -hmm. it's like a new chapter for Destiny. Yeah. So. It's it 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 feels like soft Destiny three because you, you mentioned Activision. If they were under Activision, we'd be getting D three this fall. Like we Absolutely. would. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, it feels like this is part of what D three story was gonna be, but s spread out a little bit more with taking a little bit more time, which is totally fine. For sure. As a cross, what's your take on the delay? You know, I'm I'm glad they pushed it back. Um, you know, just bringing up Activision. If they were still at Activision, we would just probably be getting essentially what D2 was at launch, and we saw how that went. Uh, things would probably be, feel a little bare bones. But the fact that this is going to bring new subclasses, we're going to have stasis, and it's going to be darkness based. I mean, this is going to be. I'm I'm with Jay. I think it's going to be Forsaken level, if not bigger. Um, 
And, and so them pushing it back to November was a little more than what I expected. I was expecting October because you got some big hitters, you know. I haven't seen Halo Infinite. But man, every Halo fan is talking about it, right? It's going to be the best thing ever. And then oh, you yeah. got Cyberpunk, which I don't know. Now I'm hearing Cyberpunk's going to get pushed back again, but I don't have any <laughs> definitive proof on that. I hope they do, to be honest. Really? And, yeah. Just because it's so busy that period? Just, right. just to, so I can just have my Cyberpunk month, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be grinding out Destiny. I mean, I'm still going to get Destiny, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be playing it, but I will be grinding through it as fast as I can to go play Cyberpunk. You know, I'm just excited about it. Um, but this is going to be a good opportunity to show what uh, what Destiny 2 is all about. You know, it's going up against the, some, some major heavy hitters. And uh, let's see how it does. I think it's still going to do great. Like I said, I think this expansion is going to be... Uh, phenomenal even though and a lot of people are like oh you're shilling out man you're hyping things up what's wrong with you but you know look you, you talk you talk in my lingo here darkness based subclasses take my money <laughs> i found the quote here here's what they said in the new release window as the first chapter in a new trilogy of expansions beyond light is beginning a new era of destiny 2 we have a powerful story to tell and incredible new features that we're really excited for players to experience so so that was the specific quote and man if that means they have to wait until november 10th to make sure they they hit it correctly or to the best of their ability sure i i don't really get that upset about delays personally if it means the game's going to be better when we get it in our hands the first time sure whatever now, if you're talking about like three years, then something's wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> that means you've like restarted yeah. your development yeah. process. Reboot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so real quick, uh, I just kind of wanted to throw this to the panel because I, I've been doing this weird giant archive project for my dumb YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm trying to archive all the story content that's being, being content vaulted. So I'm actually kind of happy about the delay selfishly. It's going to give me more time to work on that. But to, to capture some of that, I've been playing on a new light account. Ha have, has anybody on the panel ever started up like a, a fresh account in, in recent days, Travis? Yeah, I started a fresh account the first time I played on PC in new, new light, which was you know, before I before I did the cross play and yeah, I played the first mission and then got dropped in the tower and then I think I was just like, all right, that was cool. Novelty <laughs> over. <laughs> that was pretty much it. What about you as Cross or QJ? Are you guys you ever Yeah, I, I played New Light um at Bungie last year and it was um I mean it was a lot of fun, you know, just to go back. I have not started a new account since though, but I have read comments from people that have stated that they feel lost. They don't really know what's going on, both narratively and just in game in general. You see all these icons and stuff. And yeah. I don't know how to direct a new player. You know, um, I don't know. C could the system be better? I know. Didn't they say they were going to be redoing new light stuff? They're going to be doing the mission structure and everything. They did They're say. They have to with all yeah. the content vaulting going on. A lot of it's going to go. I mean, the Red War is going to be gone. And all that good stuff. Not all of Red War, but sizable. Like the whole, any of the Titan missions are gone. The IO missions they are gone. Go. Uh, I think all of Warmind is gone. Like all of it. Mm -hmm. um, Same with Curse. And Curse. Well, I'm fine with Curse going away. <laughs> it's my <laughs> least. It's my least favorite story they've ever told. Yeah. Like ever. So. Do, yeah. do you know if the Almighty missions in the uh, Red War campaign are going to be gone? I don't know. Is that technically Mercury? I don't really know. Yeah. Not sure. Well, anyway, having having played on a new light account, it's it's really neat. And my advice to new light players or beginner players are just do anything. There's an intro quest that has you go around and talk to all the vendors, so you kind of get like a base. If you like any of that stuff, like if you like PvP, just go play PvP. You're gonna level up. It it literally showers you with blues early on. All you should be doing is just equipping the highest power thing until you hit like ten ten, or even over a thousand. Once you start hitting over a thousand. Then there's like a million guides out there how to level. Basically, that's when you start doing your your powerful than your pinnacles, and that's that's the long and the short of it. There isn't a trick. There's nothing that you can really do incorrectly. Just just play the game. And uh, if you want to know narratively, go over to Amanda. She's on the far right of the tower, and uh, pick up those story quests. We were just talking about Red War. They're going away this November, and they do a really good job of just sort of taking you through the systems and getting you a little bit of more 
uh, the narrative context of, of what the game is. And, and that's my TLDR advice um, for what a new light player should did, should do. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I, I was just kind of curious if, if you guys had done that because, man, it's weird. Like, uh, yeah. Black Armory, that's like, it is just there now. All the all the menagerie stuff, like the whole menagerie quest. There's like a quest line you can do with Warner ninety nine, so that's still there. But the introduction is just text. Uh, I don't know if the alliance quest is still there. So like that, remember the alliance stuff that happened? It's, yeah. It's also like a blast from the past going back and playing all this this content. I'm like, oh, I forgot they did this weird thing, and and now it's just not. There were there supposed whatsoever. to be consequences, and then <laughs> yeah, there weren't. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Uh, I think that's all we really had for this episode. I don't want I don't want to drag it out for <laughs> just to drag it out. But uh, I do want to thank uh, our guests today, Kuja and Azacross. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Here's Laura yeah, Third man, for you find them. I interrupted yeah, thanks you. Thanks for having us. No, no, <laughs> thanks, thanks, for, thanks having for having us. us. Mm -hmm. And enjoy talking about everything. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah, thanks guys. All right. Well, that's all we have for this episode, everybody. And I'm definitely not doing a production thing on the side here. Okay, there it is. That's all we have for this episode, everybody. So until next time, Guardians, Guardians out. out. Wow, <laughs> we nailed it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>